All right, guys, I guess we're back. Um, I have no idea what this angle looks like because Earl is in Hemet now, and I'm in my new place in Riverside. It's weird living in a trailer, but it's, it's kind of cool. I kind of like it. Um, so I'm back where I started, I guess, as far as um, location-wise. So I guess it's been about four months since we did this. The last message that we did was um, called, I do it all again. And um, those of you that have been with me all this time, you know how, how hard it has been and how long this journey of faith has been for me. As far as um, the preaching and teaching, my mind has been on the Lord. I've thought about the Lord. That hasn't changed. We got all our cool little toys back. Got the shark, got the wolf. That poster's from the movie Somewhere in Time. Got to see Superman act like a fool that was in love with uh, Jane Seymour, as I told you guys before in, in a past um, message, if you could call it that. I had the opportunity to meet Jane Seymour, but I decided against it, in spite of the fact that I admired her. I decided against it. I wanted her to think of her as I thought of her and wanted to leave it at that. But we're going to continue on with church history. We're going to get back to that point again. Now, bear with my voice. It's it's um, still coming back. As you all know, I was very ill. Now, whether or not you believe that was COVID or strep throat or whatever it was, all I can tell you, that was one of the most horrible experiences with sickness that I've experienced in my life. So, um, whatever label you want to put on it, I was really jacked up. So those of you that, that helped me out during that time, I thank you. Um, brother Sean, the, the food you sent for me when that illness first set on, I, I, I appreciate that. Couldn't actually eat it. I could smell it. I think I took a little teeny bite. But at that point in the sickness, I was not able to swallow for a good three days. I wasn't even able to swallow water. Brother Scotty, thank you for you and Christina helping me. And, and Pastor Charles, thanks for the loan. And um, last thing I'd ever want to do is be a burden on the body of Christ or on anybody. So um, as we continue these messages, uh, this journey in faith, I'll do the best of my ability to unpack the Word of God for you. I will tell you this. The springboard for our messages, the basis of our text, is going to be found in the, in the um, book of John, not the gospel according to John. I almost misspoke there. I almost said the gospel according to John. But in the book of John, it's chapter 2, I believe. I believe it's verse 15, verse 17, and I will have my Bible up here. For the next message, I'm still getting things situated here. As you can see, it's a much smaller living arrangement, but I do like it. I mean, as far as a, a trailer goes, it's pretty big. It's got three slide outs, so I have an actual living room and kitchen and an actual bathroom and an actual small bedroom. But anyway, the basis for our text is going to be, He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Literally, we're not talking about religion. We're not talking about church membership. We're talking about he that does the will of God. That's what's pleasing to God. You know, some of our some of our paths, because the Bible tells us that there's paths of the righteous man, meaning there's more than one path. Now, don't, don't, don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying there's more than one path to heaven. That's not what I'm saying. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way to heaven. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. When Philip said, said, Lord, show us the Father. And he says, Philip, you've been with me all this time. And don't you understand? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So Jesus was literally the example of what God the Father would be like. Now, it's because of Jesus that we are not consumed. It's because of Jesus that we have this grace, that we have the ability, the opportunity to be saved. 
Because in the Old Testament, you piss God off, he consumed you with fire. Boom, doom, you were gone. That's it. History. Bye. He didn't play games. He did not mess around. He was no joke. But Jesus, personifying the grace of God in the flesh, came as a man, as an Old Testament prophet, but so much more than that. Literally, God himself, God himself, clothed himself in human flesh to redeem us, to save us, because he knew we were a bunch of dirty rats, he knew we were a bunch of jerks, and, and, and make no mistake about it, you might not cuss when you stub your toe. You might speak a little more kindly than me. But if you're born in this diseased humanity, as I call it, in this Adamic race, you're a dirty rat. For the very fact that you were born into this human condition. And that is why we needed a Savior. That is why we need God Almighty. That is why we need the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from all sin, past, present, and future, including the sin conscience. That's why we need the Lord. You know, I've told you about my exploits of the past. And those of you that have admired me from when you were little kids when you watched me preach, I know I could be a strange egg. I know I can be a pain sometimes. But God put something in me when I was a little boy and something he'll demand out of me before I leave this earth, before I fulfill this destiny in God. I never wanted to be a preacher. Who in the heck wants to be a preacher? I was more interested in becoming a womanizer than a preacher. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie about the failures of humanity. That's why, you know, you know, Veronica's my best friend. She gets me. She understands me. She knows what you see is what you get. And that's why we've been friends this long, all these years. Why she's tolerated me all these years. I know I'm a pain. I know I have done stupid and crazy things. I don't think she would mind me saying this. She once told me a long time ago. She said, your craziness is what makes you you. Your, your craziness is what makes you Rick Vargas. Now look, some of the things I did were stupid, but I truly believe that God knew about this foolishness when he called me. You know, it's easier sometimes to lasso in a wild donkey and to get him to obey the master's will than to get someone who never cussed when they stubbed their toe, never did anything contrary, so to speak. But they don't have that fight in them when the time comes. Look, you don't got to be a brawler or a drunkard or some crazy, psychotic bum to be a Christian. I'm not saying that. But it's easier to tone down a man of action, a man of war, a hothead, than it is to raise up a docile man. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I think so many of us preachers were, weren't always preachers. That's why Jeff and I did so well out in San Bernardino because we were into we were fighters before we became preachers. So when some crazy nut on the street wants to fight us, we say, well, yeah, we'll lead you to Jesus, but we'll beat the daylights out of you first if you want. You know, some of these guys are like, man, these guys are crazy. But they're like, he's dead now. But it was it was Brother Terry, this brother out in San Bernardino that, that Jeff and I were fond of. But when he first met us, he hated us. Hated us. Like, where we thought we were going to have to 
to throw down with this guy. And at that point in time, we would have. We most definitely would have. But it never came to that. But he, he would, he came to us one day and he says, Ken, can I help you guys set up your equipment? We said, yeah, sure, Terry. And we're like, what's up with this dude? Is he going to stab us when we're, when we're not looking or something? Because as far as we knew, he hated us. But he kept coming out every week. And he began to talk to us more and more. He began to ask for prayer. And he became a very good friend of ours. Someone we, we loved in the Lord. Well, in fact, we love in the Lord. But now he, he's, in, he's in paradise now. But he told us something one day. He says, you know what, Rick, Jeff, when I first met you brothers, I hated you guys. And he says, I've heard every sermon, every message. I've heard all these preachers. They come out, they talk a good game, and they go home to their house. And they forget all about us. He says, but you guys, you came out with stuff I've never heard before. And he said that, um, he said, and also, you guys have balls. You know, even when people try to give you a hard time, you stand your ground and you're like, well, what's up? And he's like, and you guys were on the rail. You, you kept coming back. No matter what, you, you always came back. And I began to listen to what you were guys were saying. And I realized you guys were the real thing that God had sent you guys. And so he became a good friend of ours, brother in Christ. And he ended up dying of um, pneumonia. It was well before the COVID thing. You know, the life on the street is a hard life. But he died with his faith in the Lord. With his faith in Jesus Christ. And he reverenced us as men of God. There is other men, other stories I will share with you someday. Besides Terry. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. There's some pretty saints out there. They speak better than me. They look better than me. They, they are more appealing to the masses than me. But they wouldn't reach Terry. Pastor Jeff and I did because God sent us to do that work. God has many instruments. He has many tools. Someone once told me, they said, you know, Rick, they said, he said, God has many tools. He says, he has hammers. He has this and that. He says, you're a gun. He says, you just shoot out the word of God. <laughs> I thought that was funny, personally. And then that, that was around the time we did the, he's God's gun and he's loaded, the Reno Pena thing, the Them That Believe, my first movie, filmed on a Panasonic PVDV 953. You know, I've been trying to get another one because I, I sold mine to Pastor Charles years ago. I think he bought it off me because he felt sorry for me because I was broke. But I've been trying to find another one. And I can't find one that works anywhere. I mean, I have a Canon C100. And Veronica asked me if I sold it. I said, no, no, I didn't sell it. I have it. But I don't know how to use it. I'm not a cameraman. You know, that's why I hire cameramen to film for me when I make a movie. I'm not a cameraman. A director, writer, producer, whatever I am. Just a dude that likes making movies. But anyway, a Panasonic PVDV 953, even an idiot like me, could operate that. I know how to use that camera. But it was 3CCD, which was the cream of the crop back in the late 90s and 2001, 2002, three, And then after that, everything was HD. And then it's... 4K and whatever the heck is out there now. But um, I'm not a cameraman. Yes, brothers, I can hear you ringing in my ears. You're a preacher before you're a filmmaker. Most definitely, of course, preaching's breathing. Filmmaking's a passion. Preaching is who I am. Can't get away from that. 
No matter what I try to do, no matter how hard I tried to run, it's not going to happen. It is what it is. I know who I am. I know what I am. I know what God called me to do. And we haven't did it yet. But we will. But as we continue this journey of faith, we're going to talk about the church fathers. We're going to get going on that now. And I'll stop taking all these stupid side trails and side roads before I make the shark mad and he bites me in the neck while I'm preaching. Or the wolf comes and gets me over here. You know, it's funny about this place out here where I'm at, where my trailer's at. I could hear these coyotes yipping all night, you know, because there's a bunch of them out here. There must be a, a family of them out here. And so what I did is I, I was cracking up. So I pulled out my phone, got on YouTube, and put a wolf howling. And those coyotes shut up. And they know their place. They're afraid of wolves. But anyway, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So that'll be our springboard. We'll pick it up on church history. We're back. We'll be doing these every week again. Maybe sooner if I feel the need to preach before then and I think you all deserve to hear it but anyway in all in all seriousness we will we will pick up pick up where we left off and you know I was very sick and now I'm not so we'll continue on that's the message for tonight and I'll be talking to you guys soon